What is that? Oh, man. George just pulled up this nice little hussa. So I'm going to send it down on the big rod. Oh, look at the size of that thing. What is it? I don't know. It's huge. It is huge. Color, color. Holy. What is that thing? George, what are we doing? Um, we don't really know exactly. Oh, well, I do, but I'm sort of keeping it to myself. <laughs> All right. Can't let Timmy see this out. <laughs> I stop it. No, Timmy's had a little mishap. Um, we sort of knew from the start, we were, well, we weren't really sure how the roof would hold up. The boat does go fast and Timmy likes to drive fast, so got a few fatigue cracks in it already. So we're planning on hopefully tying it into the console and um, try and stop this sideways moving. All we need to do, we're gonna, we're gonna chop off the top of the, the uh, little grab rail on the console. We're gonna 10 mil plate that. That's gonna get welded to the top of the console. That's gonna be a pad for us to drill and tap into. And then we're gonna make a couple of nice pillars to come from here to the roof. We're gonna tie it back in with a little partial shelf. And we're gonna tie it in here with a little tiny screen. And that will eliminate any of that sideways movement. And the roof will be bulletproof. The worst part about this job, like it's painted, so it's gonna be, you know, we'll do all the fab work, get it all sorted. And then it's going to be a bit of time just, you know, blending in the painted roof and repainting it. But we'll get it sorted. Got to have the roof. Got a lot of stuff on the roof that needs to stay on the roof. We just had the um, the roof off and went for a run yesterday and it was pretty hot. And it was all right. And then we come back and we put the roof back on the boat so George could fab up this custom stuff. And it was just instant, instant really? cool breeze underneath, instant relief out there in the sun. So, yeah, would like the roof. <laughs> for sure it get, keeps you out there fishing for longer look at the end of the day it's a good thing that's happened um we need to we need to see where we need to release some stress and it's not that bad you know the little cracks that have appeared you know probably obviously we've sanded back too much material but all in all it's fared up pretty good um for the size of the roof so like it's 2200 long oh, 2200 wide and it's 1800 plus long mm. It was nearly that whole full sheet. Yeah. Um, I don't know, the estimated weight on that roof alone would be, gee, it's got to be 150 kilos. I thought, yeah, between 100 and 120, I would yeah. say. Yeah. So, She's heavy. Yeah. But anyway, all, all in all, it's fared up pretty good. It's held up pretty good on the gunnels. You know, we strengthened it underneath. There's only some minor cracking on the gunnels, but it comes down to some, there was some movement there and just a little bit too much material taken away but we'll fix that um, and, and i'm confident yeah this center section is going to tie everything in oh baby oh baby Wrong baby 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 yeah. So we double plated it with 10 mil plate. So the 10 mil plate, the bottom plate, um, it's got a massive slot in it. 75 Yep, so we can show you that when it comes off anyway. So the idea of the slot is to weld it to the top of the console. Right, we don't want to do any welding around here. Um, even though it's going to get painted again, we just don't want to put heat where it's unnecessary. So we're going to weld up that slot, which is going to be fine. We'll end up probably seam sealing that when we go to repaint it. So we've just spent the last couple of hours just quickly making these pillars up. Um, we could have just grabbed a bit of box off the rack and put a piece of box in there, but you know, everything's got curves on it. So we curved the pillars, we fabricated the pillars. It's all out of four mil plate. This piece that we put in on the roof was six mil. So we're gonna, we've tied it into that. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna make a little shelf and that shelf's going to tie everything in so it'll, the plate will come up to the top of the roof it'll all be welded right and come down and go through and fold up 
that'll tie the top section in. So that will totally eliminate that sideways movement there. And then down the bottom, we're either gonna put a piece of pipe here, and then we'll put a tray around it as well. So Timmy can use that for storage, a little bit of storage there. Um, and that all tied in at the bottom, it isn't gonna move. So we've 100% we've eliminated the sideways movement. And there was only a tiny little bit of movement in it anyway, just mm. enough to fatigue the little bits that it did, which is not major. You know, a lot of it had, like I said earlier, was too much sanding on it, but that's it, easily fixed. Um, and like I said, it's good that it did happen. Like, you know. Yeah. This is just going to blend in and make it look nice. Nice little screen. You happy with that, Timmy? I mean, we've got a lot of support, a lot of supporters on board. Sam Allen's got all his gear on the roof. Ulrich has supported us with all the alley for the roof. Timmy wanted to scrap it, and I said, no, mate, we're not scrapping it. You're coming back up. Let's have a look at it and assess the situation. Just let him go. <laughs> so what are we doing mate? We scrapping the roof? No, we're not scrapping the roof. <laughs> the roof has been sorted. The pissy little miner splits that we're in it. Bang, bang, that's not a crack. That's where I had a stiffener across there. One there, one there, one there, one there, one tiny little one here. And I put it down to impact cracks, not sideway cracks. Because I had a real good look at where the sideways movement should have cracked and it didn't. But we've eliminated it. We told you guys the other day, we fabricated pillars, put a little partial shelf there. We've tied it all into the top of that stiffener that we did originally put in the roof. That's a six mil bit of box cut down. So that's fully welded to the roof. Uh, the 10mm plate goes onto the 10mm plate we put on the console. It's all been drilled and tapped. That'll get screwed down, so it's going to support some of the weight. There is absolutely going to be no sideways movement whatsoever. It cannot move sideways because this rectangle frame is going to stop it. So we have nailed it. But the futuristic roof that Timmy wanted is no longer a floating futuristic roof. It is a samurai plate boat roof. There you go. With plenty of structure. I like it. I don't know if you guys can see, but I just spent... Like I said, I could have just put box pillars there, but I handmade and fabricated those pillars all out of four mil plate. Um, and I opted for the softer gray plate rather than the high tensile. Um, I did that for a reason because I'm actually going to rubber mount it, but I'm rubber mounting it only for impact. So when the boat gets air under it, Bang on the ocean, it's like hitting the concrete if the boat hits square. So the rubber is just purely for impact, nothing else. I've already made the, the rubber pads up, so we're just using some three mil insertion rubber, which is plenty. Right, so that's the one for the console. Boom, little sandwich between two 10 mil plates. That'll be that one over there will go between the two 10 mil plates and that one right there. Now there might have been another issue too, like we drilled and tapped those 10 mil plates. The bolts cannot come loose, so maybe they might have come loose a little bit. So what we're going to do when we re-bolt it, we're going to swap the bolts out with longer ones and we're going to run Nidex nuts up from underneath, only on the outside gunnel pads. What we're going to do here, um, we're running eight mil bolts on the console. They'll be just with flat washers and spring washers, all tied in. So, and the screen for everybody out there, the windscreen is not a windscreen. It's just there for decoration. <laughs> and it'll stop Timmy's phone from falling out forward. <laughs> right, but by adding that second bar in, right, so it makes that rectangle shape even stronger. No so, clothesline. Yes, there's no pipe clothesline, unfortunately. <laughs> so, like I said, once that's tied into the console and bolted down hard, it physically cannot. Like, you've got to imagine the roof's trying to move sideways. How can it? It can't. It's bolted there, it's bolted here. 
If it's going to move sideways, it's pulling the gunnel completely out, it's pulling the console completely out. But I got smart when I put that pad on. There's no welding on the outside of that 10 mil pad I put on the console. So it's not pulling from that point. I've plug welded it out from a big slot that we cut out. So the load on that 10 mil pad has, is spread from there to there. The whole load is spread. It can't twist, it can't do a goddamn thing. So Timmy's gonna have a roof on his boat for years to come. I spent so yeah, all yeah, go on. I just spent two days on the water and we are very um I put sunscreen on heaps and I'm still cooked, so yeah, very much need some shade. I had to hose my dog down every half an hour on the boat so she stayed cool or a couple of times there I just threw her in the ocean. <laughs> so on from behalf of me for Timmy, we've sorted it for him, but more so for the sponsors. So Sam Allen's got a lot of stuff invested in the roof of this boat. I didn't want to see it go. Um, and also Ulrich, big supporters, big supporter of myself, it's the roof still there. So it's going to be there for a long time to come. Big thanks to George, can't thank him enough. So what we've also done, so we um, spoke to Jerry next door, he's, he's the painter guy, great, great bloke. I've feathered in all the spots that I've um, touched up and then we just scotch brighted the whole lot of it. So the, the pillars are going to get repainted, the whole underside of the roof will get repainted and from the brow up, we'll just get masked, masked it off and taped off. So Timmy's got a job tomorrow, or maybe this afternoon, take the light bar off. Um, and then we've got, tomorrow I've got a little tiny little window to do the repairs that I need to do in uh, inside the boat, and we'll run you through that. They're, free, they're, they're minor. And like I said, they aren't sideways cracks, they're impact cracks in that boat. <laughs> Happy days. Um, and I didn't want my kids going out on the boat having a great time, no shade. Mm -hmm. Ali, Amelia, Dad did it. <laughs> Alright, let's give that a go. Alright. We just got the um, roof back from the painters. There they are over there, straight next door. This morning we had a little bit of a drama, it moved a little bit, so we went and got some thicker rubber, but we've now got it fully bolted. We also used Tef Gel instead of Duralac. So um, that's a new product from Sam Allen that they're using. Sent a little tube to George the other day to give it a go. So we used Tef Gel on all our bolts. Uh, they're all eight mil, stainless steel, 40 mil. Uh, we've also got them bolted up underneath this time as well. So there you go, got some nylock. Nylock's nuts on the back there. We've got them bolted down through the console, drilled and tapped. We've got six mil rubber on there and three mil rubber on the sides to stop some of the impact. Is that right? Yeah. And then um, George just insertion went- Insertion rubber. Inser insertion rubber. Yeah. And then um, George just went and put um, a little windscreen on there as well. We've also got Evertread sent him a little bit of a Christmas gift and it was perfect for the inside of there. So we stuck a stuck of that on for our split ring pliers, our bait knife and that sort of thing. A good little shelf up there. Great little shelf for our um, batteries and GoPros up the top. We've got awesome side handles. So passengers are now actually going to have something solid to hang on to. No sideways movement whatsoever. There you oh, go, guys. Movie. There you go. So it actually, um, yeah, I didn't think it would be that solid, but George has been swinging off it all morning going, how good's this? <laughs> so there you go, boats on, uh, roofs on. Uh, last, hey? Run some wires through. Yeah, we've got to rewire the boat now. George and I are going to pull the wires up through, get them all ready, and Christian's going to give us a quick hand to wire them up the top. And then finish it all off. So yeah, not a... I had to do um, a couple of days of car detailing to get it done, but it's all here on the boat, ready to go. Lucky, lucky weather this week. It's, I'm, I'm stoked, that's super solid. It's not the complete see-through look, but it's actually got a bit more of a practical use now. So I'm actually very happy with it, how it's all, how it's all come together. And it still looks pretty good. It's gonna, gonna give us a little bit more storage on top. And when I was out with Brett, we stored all our stuff up the top here, like our um, 
yeah, split ring pliers, boat knives. It was just really easy and accessible. Traveling back, traveling back, just right, perfect there, eh? There you go. Perfect. So yeah, stoked. We'll um, give you a look at the wiring when it when it comes to it. But yeah, tap gel. If you're going to do some anti anti corrosive stuff, give it a go. It's like mozzarella cheese. This stuff, but once you get it on, it looks pretty good. That's it. There we. Yeah, we put it underneath all the washers and, and we've just left it. We're not going to wipe it off, leave as much of it on so there as possible. So we've got really good purchase on the console. So we've got six bolts there, all drilled and tapped. Two on the outside, two on the outside there. And then we're running, what, there's seven or eight? Seven, seven. Fourteen. Um, yeah, man. So we've, it's not gonna move, we've gone with bigger washers this time and we've also nylon nutted it on the bottom. So, yeah. But adding that centre section, that's just tidy. There's yeah, no, there's no sideways movement. There's no movement whatsoever. We've got a little bit of swell from the last couple of weeks of wind, so it'll be interesting to get out there and give it a real good test run. And I'm I'm stoked to have the shade back. Just yeah. working on the boat You're today. Really just saying. Yeah, it's it's made a huge difference already. So I've got to get the um, Eco X gear soundbar back up. It's another job, and then um, put a bit of Teflon on that when I do that. Videos are coming, guys. There you go. We're we're, we're almost back at it. I'm keen to get out in the water and show this young fella how to fish. Yeah, George is the next one on the boat. And then after Chrissy too, when things settle down, we'll get him get him out wide, get his kids on there as well. We're just about to, well, I've done most of it. This is the last one left, but we're just wiring up the roof after we put it back on. I didn't film any of the wiring while we were doing it because uh, we sort of rushed towards the end there. So Christian is currently wiring up George's boat just there. And um, I just borrowed his tools for the day. He taught me how to wire up my boat. So he did the console and I did all the joining around. So I'm just gonna give you a quick demonstration of how we did that now that we're doing it a second time. So we've got, this is a Sam Allen um, Mako series light. It switches between white and red. It's a 20 watt floodlight. Um, super bright, I've only got to use them a couple of times, but I'm looking forward to using them in the future. So we've got two, uh, this is marine grade wiring um, and we've run two three mil uh, wires to each each light because they come with three wires on it so you've got your black which is your negative your positive which is um, your white light and your blue which is your red light so what you do is you put your two blacks together and we're using these things so this is the four mil the blue of the four mil and the pink other three mil so you've got your three mil for um, your blue, so we'll just put them over the top. Uh, what we do is actually come um, together, but Christian told me that when you crimp these, they've got a bit of glue in them as well. So when you crimp them, you can actually damage the plastic on the outside and then water gets in and causes corrosion on your wires. So what he does is he gets me to take all of them out just by using pliers and you work your way around with the ply and then you push it out with a little screwdriver. So once you've got them out, slip your um, things over the top, your little caps. And then with your blue ones, you're gonna put them together and you're gonna slip the blue one. So the blue, yeah, oh, that is them. Blue over the top of them. Now Christian's got them all wired up. So normally you'd have to run a switch for each button, but he's got relays on them all. So you can hit one button on my console and all, all the lights will turn red, or you can go all lights white, which is um, just cleared up a little bit of space on my console. So there we go. So we'll, grow, we'll do the, I normally do the, um, the negative first. So we'll grab that and the crimpers. Actually I might just make them a tiny bit smaller, a bit long. twist those together and then we'll put our crimpers on the four mil line that up put both wires in and crimp crimp it twice put in the three mil one stick your little tube in crimp Right, so with the three wires that come out 
because you're going from two wires and we've used the four mil to a three mil, what I've done is I've cut it extra long and I've just bent it over just to give it a little bit more purchase when we put it in there. So I'll put the um, four mil over the top. Now I'm not an expert at this, but this is just how I got taught. Careful you don't cut any other wires. So now that's done, just slide your thing back over the top. Now that's got glue inside it, so when you um, heat shrink it, the glue will come out and fully protect those wires, and then everything gets split tubed after that. So we quickly put these three mils on. So number one is red, and I've labeled all the wires so that I know which one's which. So number one is red. And number two is blue for the red light. And we'll push those over the top. So there you go. And then once you heat, use the little blowtorch, you just gotta wait for Christian to get back with some gas. That's it, that's it there. So yeah. That's how we wired the whole boat. I did all the outside, Christian did all the um, all the console. The anchor light was three mil. Uh, solar panel, we've actually got four mil wiring um, that's joined into six mil and then it takes both of them down. Uh, our speaker at the front here for our Eco X gear, we've run four mil as well. So now I just got to go around and um, blowtorch them all and then split tube and put some clips on it. And that's all sorted. Let's just, is this on still? Yeah, it's on. Let's just, red light, front roof, side roof rear loop it's red so it worked red, red. there you go so i've rigged i've rigged it up right so we've got red lights so now we can turn on any sort of um front lights side lights red yeah everything's red and then as soon as you hit that red he's got four relays in there and they all turn white so i've rigged it up right so big ups to me on that one so yeah <laughs> what about me roof roof big up for me yeah, we talked about you yesterday, uh, George. <laughs> Looking forward to getting it back out on the water. George has got a couple of trips coming up, so you'll see him in the next couple of videos. We're going wide. I'm going to catch him. Righto. You heard it here first. Sit. Good girl. Hey, we going fishing? Good girl. Well, here we go. We're just about to go take the roof out for the first time since it's been rendered. Um, picking George up at the boat ramp. Yeah, we will see you guys on the water. He's um, got to look after the kids bright and early, so we're um, yeah we're having a bit of a late start this morning. Boat ramp's gonna be packed, absolutely packed. Mill, we're going. Come on, we're going. Let's go, get up. Stay there. Yeah, when's he open? Oh, uh, probably seven. Seven? It's all right, mate. <laughs> fish not going nowhere. Look where the sun's at. It's all right. You're not going to get a bite before o'clock this afternoon. Is that right? Oh, thanks. Ready, Mills? Fastest boat in the west, eh? Hey, that's a valet parking, mate. Oh, what am I, skipper? Yeah, you're skipper. Wait, what am I, skipper? You didn't turn anything on. I don't need to. We're not fishing yet. Busy old ram this morning.
Which way are we drifting? North. So we can't this way? Yeah. yeah. It is a good fish. It is a good fish. Oh, first drop of the day. What do you call it? Oh, I don't know. It's going hard. Probably a trevally. The way it's going. Oh! oh nice Look at that thing! Nice, That's a horse! Nice, that is a horse! Wow! That was first drop of the morning and I missed the mark. <laughs> There you go, first fish of the morning, big old spangly. What do you reckon, George? Yeah, good. Are you getting a Koga jig out? I think I should. That was literally second drop, the thing just absolutely annihilated. We've upgraded the hooks from the from the little ones that come with the Kogas, just uh, I think I've got four O's on there, so that you don't muck around with too many smaller fish. And he's just engulfed it on like the second drop. Nice one. <laughs> what do you reckon, George? About everything. The roof's holding up good, I think. Yeah. No movement. Good day. Nice. So we just got out. A um, bit of a nightmare at the ramp, so we didn't really muck around. Got in, got out. We're probably the fastest. Fastest off the trailer and away, weren't we, George? No word, mate. Yeah. This thing is an absolute weapon when loading on and off the trailer, so I had to get that. Yeah, roof held up really good out here. Literally, no, it's just got a little bit of vibration, but nothing that should crack it or put any stress on it. Just when you hit some waves, it just goes a little bit of vibrate, but no, yeah, nothing like it was moving before. It's rock solid now. Very nice. So, big thanks to George. All good, mate. We're out. Yeah, it's, oh, it's already doing its thing. Mill, get under the Get in the shade. Come on, girl. Anyway, so we just come out. Gonna do a little bit of um, bit of searching for some ground. Put some fish in the esky. We've got the first one. Just dropped it down the Koga jig straight on to a nice spangled emperor. So, yeah, first one's in the box. And then, um, yeah, we tried to release it, but unfortunately didn't want to swim down. Big tuna school up there. Nice Koga jig. I got a what? mad eye. Yeah, what are you running, George? Uh, Hodgie hooked me up with a mad eye. He said, give it a go. There you so go. I think we're giving it a go for you, mate. When you actually go out and pull some nannies up and some reds up, they've got these weird looking shrimp things in their stomachs a lot of the time. So, and they look pretty similar to that. So yeah, Hodgie's recommended that for George. George is gonna drop it down, see how it goes. Good start to the morning. And uh, yeah, we're gonna keep drifting around. Boats freaking everywhere at the moment. So yeah, we'll do our best to stay out of their way. And we got a lot of stuff to look at in shore, mate. What's that for? Oh, I don't like using it. Well, can we go and bolt them there? I'll put them on the boat in my shop. I'm chasing the shade. It's not stupid, eh? looking for some new marks check this thing out seven meters high and 55 meters of water in the middle of nowhere oh I'm not even going anywhere near it 
turn around. Waiting for that to pop up. Yeah, we've been driving around for a good half an hour, 40 minutes, just waiting for something to show up on the sounder. So we'll go back. Seems to be a little bit of good ground around here. Yeah. Good 50 meters away. That's a good fish. Here we come back on the mark that we just drove over. Look at that, George. Look at that bump. It's actually a pretty sizable bump. What is that? Oh man. Eight meters off the bottom. Fish, man. That was a good fish. Good fish. Now I'm so excited. Oh, I dropped it. That was a good fish, I dropped it. Oh, he's there. He's back. He's back to me. Oh, I got him. <laughs> yes, Georgie. Oh, what is going on? He's back. He's back. Set the hook. Santa Georgie! I got him, bro! Oh. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh. What's happening? Oh, my bottom fish is gone. Nah, oh, you got busted off. Yep. That was a big fish. Was... <sighs> the rod didn't, it didn't move. That was crazy, mate. That was a horse. It didn't move. Straight up. What have I got? This thing. Timmy. Oh. Oh. Felt good too. Ooh, went hard. Huh? Went hard. Looked good. I don't know, it might have snipped me off. Might have been like a mackerel or something. It's up off the bottom. Yeah, right. in the... Put it on the board. 45. No, 55. Let me have a look. 55, 60. 55. Nice, mate. Straight in the slurry. I don't think you'll swim back, so. Mm. Enjoy it. I'll enjoy you. Nice work, George. Next one. Oh, I just got taken on the way down. Taken? Yeah. I just got it. I just got eaten on the drop. Oh no. What? It's big. It's big. Lock him up, bro. <laughs> it is locked up. <laughs> oh, it's a big trevally. It's huge. That's good. Get him. Oh, Let's get him. I'll be fighting this all day. Come on. 
eating on the ring. Nah, it's got big head shakes. <laughs> the line just started peeling off, eh? This setup's a beast, absolute beast. <laughs> You'll pull yourself in the water before you break this thing, eh? Huh? Oh, it's a big trevally, betcha. Can you see it? I can see it. Can you? Oh, you reckon? Yeah, it felt like a GT. Bro, you had a hit, eh? Yeah. Spend too long in a shed. It's <laughs> a nice jig. What jig is that? That's the old. Oh, it's in attack. Nice. The old gold, striped gold seems to do the trick. Hit it on the way down. 50 what? 50 odd metres of water. Yeah. Yeah, nice. No, oh, once it turned him, he was all right. He pulled like he was a lot bigger than that. Yeah. Thought I was going to be in for a 45 minute fight. <laughs> That's sick. Right, eh? Very well. Back you go, bud. Yo! Here we go. George just pulled up this nice little hussar. So I'm going to send it down on the big rod. And last time I did this, I got a nice big red emperor. So we'll chuck him up there. George is on. He's red. Nanny. Yeah. Large mouth. Woo! Nice work, George. First red of the day. Go, you on? Yeah. Oh. Oh. You got him? Yeah. You got him? Oh. Oh. Wait. Yeah, he's white. Oh. Go. Go. Got him, mate? Yep. Look at the size of that thing. What is it? I don't know, it's huge. It is huge. Holy, what is that thing? Oh, big guy. Oh, he's a fucking Oh, man. Oh, he's gonna go spastic. He's gonna go fucking realistic. You need to get a photo of him. Holy moly. He's a horse. He doesn't even realize. Yes, got it off. Well guys, um, turned out it wasn't a bad day for Brett. <laughs> this is mine and George's efforts, which isn't too bad. There's enough fish there for a couple of weeks of feed. Yeah, not a bad day. Yeah, George and I went out. We, um, what happened? We sort of found our ground as the fish were sort of turning off. Brett got out there super early and, and banged them and then got some in the afternoon as well. So. Yeah, he, um, he had some good luck on his side and George and I had a few good fish, but yeah, check this out. This is Brett's haul. Some absolute donks on the nanny department. I think we won in the coal trout and the spangly department, but he definitely nailed the reds. So yeah, I'm just going to fill it them up, clean the boat down. We finished a bit late. I'll give you guys a look. There we go there, that's the roof. Really impressed with it. There are a little bit of vibrations coming through there, but nowhere near as much of movement as, um, and I don't think it's going to affect it at all. So yeah, a little bit of vibration still there, but yeah, nothing that should cause any sort of cracking. And we had heaps of storage up top and down the bottom there. Big thanks to George for fixing the roof. We had a cracker day yesterday and um, hopefully we can get him out again soon and 
and get onto some more, get out a bit earlier. We sort of hit the hit the water a bit late. We didn't really find our ground till about 12 o'clock yesterday. We sort of got the last bit of the bite on where we had found the ground. So very keen to go and try that ground again. Brett just gave me a quick masterclass. No one's ever taught me to fill it properly. I've done my own sort of, you know, hack the meat off, but Brett just gave me a masterclass in how to fill it. And I've just practiced with a few of my spangoolies and what else did I fill it? And some nannies. And then I got the wings off them as well. I'm going to tell you what Brett just told me in in idiot terms. <laughs> and we're going to fill it this cold trap. So, first of all, you're just going to make your cut through the back here. And down towards the head. And then spin around. And then you want to come down here. To, you sort of want to cut down to there. And then work your way back past the, what are they, little fins, and you want to sort of angle your knife down towards, so you want to cut into the gut cavity. Don't put your knife too deep so you're cutting all the guts up. Just put your tip in, you just want to cut the skin first. So then you want to go through just above the anus, and then you want to angle your knife down towards the back of the tail, and you want to feel your way all the way along towards the end of the tail. So keeping it as close to the to the bones as possible just cutting just cutting the skin right down to the end there and then angle your knife back the other way and cut all your meat to the what do you call that big the spine bone yep and then in here so you don't miss that little meat when you're taking the um, top side off you want to cut back in along there that's something that i've never done before but look at that and then we're going to spin around cut down on the top spin the knife around and i just get it started facing that way and then bring your knife use back. the flat of your knife to feel the um, backbone yep and then face it back down towards the tail run all the way down there to your tail and then take that off down your spine bone and then you want to come down along the back here until you start feeling the bones and then you want to run up Run up over there till you get to your pin bones. So cut through your pin bones. Yeah. And then you're onto your rib cage. So they're your little pin bones that run down there. Onto your rib cage, and you want to angle the knife down that way and work your way over the top of the rib cage all the way down. Oh, see there's that little meat there. So that you're not cutting through those rib cage. And there you have it. That's one fillet off the cold trout. How did I do, Brad? Very good. Thanks. Number one, yeah. Yeah, so right. that's as much meat as you can get off one fillet. So yeah, I'm a bit slow at it, but that's the quick quick five minute lesson that Brett just taught me. So if it helps someone else out, that's the way I'm gonna be doing my fish from now on, so. Be a pro filleter in no time. I'm pretty happy with that. No, I'm glad we did a good one. <laughs> 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 I've stuffed it up a couple of times, but we're getting there. The, spang the spanglies were a bit hard, the pin bones. Well, practice makes perfect. Too easy. Thanks for filming that, Brett. <laughs> no worries.